stop it. All right. Uh, what did I say was next? I believe I said I would talk about you. the Umbrella Academy. Umbrella right. Academy. All right. Uh, this is a show I've been chipping away at for quite a while. It's got one season on Netflix. Um, that season is 10 episodes long. The episodes range from 45 minutes to an hour. So they're they're on the lengthier side. So it's a beefy show. Yeah. Is Umbrella Academy... Is it, like, based on something? It is based yeah. on a comic a comic book series. Okay. Yeah. I've never yeah. read it. I know it exists. Um, and the art of the comic book series and the character designs are so different from what we got. But, I mean, that's... it's a It seems like a cool adaptation. I know they changed a lot. We're going to be talking only about the Netflix show because that's really all I know. Um... The premise of the show is one day, I believe in uh, 1984. That was the day I was going to just put it out randomly, but okay. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, but it, it actually was. On this on the same day, um, something upwards from like 30 to 40, or, or maybe it was more in the 20s to 30s, kids were just spontaneously birthed, as in the moms weren't pregnant before, they were completely healthy, like, no signs of being pregnant, and all of a sudden there's just babies out in the world. Cool. You have this rich, uh, multi-billionaire reaching out to all these families and adopting as many of these kids as he could. He ends up adopting seven. He takes them in as orphans and raises them as the Umbrella Academy, a school-slash-house of superhero children because all these kids evidently had uh super powered abilities yeah it's kind of like Obviously. a it's like a Obviously. not x-men it is it's like an x-men <laughs> i'd say x-men is the closest comparison okay <laughs> and i'm gonna be talking a lot about episode uh one here uh and in specific spoilery uh context because it's only the first episode but then i'll ease up on the spoilers in a bit the comic has a very distinct art style yeah don't know if i like it Dist <laughs> distinct is a good word um so i, I can go over the characters because i think they're really important but the premise of the show aside from that is that Several years later, all these characters are in their early, late 20s, early 30s, and they all get a letter and a message that their father has died, and they all have to get back together for his funeral. And the problem was their father was terrible, and they all Ooh. do not like him, and they all drifted apart after their time as superheroes together. So they all have to meet back up after all this time has passed, and you get to see a bunch of character dynamics work off of each other, which is the best part of the show. Uh, the Umbrella Academy kids are as follow. Reginald, who is their father, didn't give them names. So the, he they go by one through seven. That's just Ooh. what he calls them. And luckily their robot mother that he built to take care of them gave them proper names. So <laughs> we got one who is um, Luther. Luther's superpower is being moderately super strength. Okay. Where, <laughs> it's, ki it's kind of bullshit because, like, in the third episode, Luther fight fights a guy who... He's just... He's a large man, but he does not have superpowers. He's a trained, like, time assassin who is a prevalent character of the show. And he's able to physically fight Luther, whose power is super strength. Um, so he's just, like... A little bit stronger than a guy his build should be. The thing about his build is, is Luther unfortunately is a half gorilla man. Uh oh. So let me let me. I, it's really important I dig up a picture of Luther because words don't do justice. Yeah, I'm looking at the comic version, but I think he said the show looks a little bit different. Oh, it looks a lot different. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> oh God. Show me this lab. Yeah, this is Luther. Uh, wow, my Mac is so. Freaking slow, um, and his power is Tyler. If you have a picture there, just post it. Yeah, I got you. There you go. Uh, for for your lovely reference, all of you at home can also Google Luther. Uh, oh, he, okay. He's oh, a he's very different. large gorilla man, uh, and the reason why he's a gorilla man <laughs> is because his father had to experiment on him 
after a very harsh mission had him almost dead he turns him into this larger gorilla so not only is he massive but also like he's only kind of strong sort of yeah, knowing nothing about this series i think this is one where i i i think i might like the comic version better of this really game. I think he looks a lot cooler in the comics. What does he look like in the comics? <laughs> <He> looks <badass. laughs> um, okay, number two is Diego. He Diego. is um, his power. It's definitely different from the, in the comics. Apparently, his power was just to hold his breath infinitely. Okay, it's not a great power. In the TV show, he has telekinesis when throwing knives, so he can throw knives with really sharp accuracy, and he oh, can shit. also straight bend. up beautiful. <laughs> He can bend knives as he's throwing them, so he kind of can throw them at weird trajectories. Which is like a, it's a not super common style of superpower, so I appreciate it a little bit more than just super strength. Um, you got the third character, who is uh, Allison. Her power is the coolest of the bunch, and it's, she can control anyone or force them to take any action by saying, I heard a rumor that blank and then Ooh. if you hear her say it you have to do it so they show off all the kids powers in the first episode of when they were kids so they're stopping a bank heist when they're like 12 and she goes up and she's like i heard a rumor that you put all the money down and you attacked all your friends and then Jesus. she just walks away and the bank robbers attack each other um you got number four who uh i believe number four is klaus Klaus is a drug addict whose power is to see the dead. And um, there's more components to his power, but he's a very fun character who's acted really well. Uh, he's got a great design. Uh, and he's I, I think a lot of people like Klaus. He has a lot of character development throughout the show as well. You got number five. who um, Her name is Abigail Lincoln and she wears a red hat. Uh, no, number five is a small boy who time travels and teleports through time. Oh. And five is interesting. He's not there in the beginning of the first episode. He only shows up at the end. Five just disappeared one day when they were all 12. And he never showed up again until the show starts. So five shows back up and he's still in the body of a 12-year-old. But he's been time traveling for like 80 plus years. So he has the mind of an 80-year-old and the body of a 12-year-old. And you think that would be cheesy, but it's acted really well. Man. Um, really shout outs to that actor. I like this, just this picture of the actor Tyler posted. He seems like he'd be a cool character. He, he still has their Young Days Academy uniform on. Exactly. Yeah, just from the character design, you can tell. Uh, above that is Klaus. Uh, find a picture of Diego there. Diego's cool. Uh, number six is Ben. The deal with Ben is that he's already dead by the time the show starts. Okay. Ben's power was to summon, like, an eldritch monster from his insides. Oh, fuck. So just, like, tentacles would come out and just destroy everything. Yeah, I was wondering. Like, a lot of the comic book covers I saw only had six um, people on it. <laughs> Which I think it's really cool that one of them is just starts off dead. But if you will remember, Klaus's power is to see the dead. And unbe unbeknownst to his entire family, Klaus is co constantly communicating with Ben. And Ben's kind of like Klaus's closest, even when they were growing up, they were the closest together. Cool. And Klaus, as his life is getting worse and worse of his, because of his drug addiction, Ben is the only one, the only one that's there for him. And he's constantly trying to help him get better. Um, and finally, we have number seven, Vanya. Vanya has no superpower. So... She grew up in this family, and she was adopted because there was a high chance she would have a superpower because she was born um, when that big event happened where they were all just spontaneously born. And the deal with Vanya is that she was just always kind of the outcast of the family. She um, got that bad luck with those. She got that bad luck, and Reginald already treats the people with superpower bad. For example, to train Klaus, he locked them up in a ma mausoleum uh, until he could conjure up more dead things oh. and and talk to them, and he would train them and be cold to them. He didn't even name them, just all business kind of father. So you can imagine that Vanya didn't get any better treatment. What um, an asshole! And she wasn't special either. Oh, I mean, 
Tyler posted a creepy picture of her. Don't mind her eyes there. That's late series stuff. Yeah, don't don't Google it if you if you don't want spoilers because the only thing that come up are Sir Dick Reginald. Big spoiler. So yeah. those are your main casts. Um, you got some other really relevant characters. You got Pogo, who is a chimp who yeah. has been their but their butler all along. I was about to ask, like, in every single thing I see on Netflix, like, like the splash art for this show is just this chimp, and I'm like, where does the chimp come in? The, so Pogo is great, like. They all don't have great relationships with each other, but they all seem to really respect Pogo because Aww. Pogo and Grace, their robot mom, were the only support systems they had growing up. Unfortunately, Pogo is burdened by having to carry all of Reginald's secrets, Ooh. so that comes into play later on in the series as well. But I mean, it's no surprise because he was very loyal to Reginald. And then you have kind of the antagonists. You have Cha-Cha and Hazel. They are time assassins who travel back to make sure that the world ends because that's the plot. Okay. In, in a week from the day that Reginald dies, the world ends and Five comes back in time and he's like, oh, by the way, the world's ending and we got to do something about it. Well, damn. Uh, all in all, just by describing all of these character personalities, the thing the show does best is they pair these characters up in different configurations so you can see them play off of each other they got a lot of different things like luther is a total boy scout and has always been loyal to reginald diego like he he almost spits in his father's grave because he thinks his father was such a shitty man and he was not a good person worth mourning um diego's a vigilante uh you got klaus who is just barely holding on he's stealing shit from his dad's library because like why not you can buy him more drugs Vanya is just kind of disconnected. Allison is really close to Luther. They kind of had a crush on each other. And I mean, they're not really related, but they were raised together. So you got that like weird taboo going on. Um, so I'm looking at these time assassins in the comics. They look awesome. They look amazing in, in the comics. So they put these masks on in the show as well. They don't look quite like this, but yeah. Uh, you can see above those two pictures of them in the comics, that's them in the show without the masks on they're they're like they're a weird group of enemies because they're simultaneously goofy but pretty effective at what they do they very casually murder but then they also squabble and and kind of goof around very like they, they feel really human at the Ugh, end of the day i like the i like the comic masks better <laughs> i mean they could be more stylized at the end of the day um so, like I said, the strength of the shows is pitting these characters against each other. Not against each other, but putting them together in different conf configurations. Yeah. And you get to see how they, um, how they kind of interact with each other. And you learn lo a lot about their past and their present just based on how they can interact with each other. You got some really good plot lines involving their powers. For example, Allison, after their superhero days, she coasted through life by forcing her way into things so because of her i heard a rumor power she's a mega superstar actress mm. because any time that things weren't going her way she could manipulate the situation to make it go her way and it gets really dark when you find out she had been using her power on her little daughter which got, got her divorced with her husband and oh, potentially God. There's a potentially she used her power on certain people to make sure they love her, which all this paints her to be a terrible character. She's probably my favorite because she's trying to be better in the present day and she's dealing with a lot of imposter syndrome because I, I feel like her power would be easy to snowball. You just make a little command here and there and next thing you know, you've lived a whole life of lies. Uh there, there is a weakness to the show. Sometimes the script's not the strongest. Uh, sometimes the action's okay. I particularly don't like the finale, um, but there is a season two coming, uh, so I'm excited to see more. Definitely really like the character interactions. Definitely like where certain character storylines go. Uh, pretty excited to see season two. I'd give this a solid like 3.5. I could see... it. it it is a show where if you get annoyed at people being shitty people where they're just kind of dumb and emotionally stunted, a lot of these characters are like that, but also deliberately because they didn't grow up very normally. 
So when they're repeating some of their father's very mistakes, it feels very intentional, but I could see it being very frustrating to some people. Um, yeah, I think the I, most interesting thing about the show, like the most interesting things about the show you described is like how each person's like power might have like shaped their personality. Like the, I heard a rumor girl. Yeah, there's a ton of that. The time assassins just seem really cool. Like even a, a, a small detail, like five travel to the future. No human beings were alive when he was in the future. So he found a mannequin called Dolores or he named her Dolores and she kind of became his companion for all his time in the future. Oh, man. So when he goes back in time, he finds the Dol Dolores doll and kind of starts dragging her around in his journeys. And I, it's just kind of sweet as like a coping mechanism. But it's um, also like tragic. Yeah, it's like Wilson from uh, Cast Away kind oh, of thing. You kill me. <laughs> really good. Uh, that's that's all I really got. It's uh, I, I do rec I think you guys would enjoy it. There's uh, yeah, it like something some like... dumb moments here. It really sounds like a Bradley thing because it really explores like these children upbringings, and I they're really I can't stress how interesting Reginald's relationship is with the children. It's uh, it's very fascinating to watch.